For Sidney Pestka, the world of science revolves around possibilities, finding ways to cure diseases by harnessing our body's fundamental building blocks. It's a passion that began as a young boy. I started developing things when I was a kid. Not that they were exciting or anything, but they were exciting to me. Born in Poland, Pesca came to America with his family as a one-year-old. His mother pushed him to learn English, and his father instilled in him a love of engineering. After attending Princeton and the University of Pennsylvania Medical School, Pesca went to work at the National Institutes of Health and later at the Roche Institute of Molecular Biology, where he became intrigued by interferons. Interferon is a protein that's not around your body significantly unless you're attacked by a virus. The way it works is once the interferon is, is produced, it floats around to the other uh, areas of the body and protects those cells from further attack by viruses. Interferon had been discovered in 1957, but until Sidney Pesca, no one had been able to purify the protein in order to gauge what its true therapeutic value might be. We didn't know what interferon really was. We felt that we needed to prove that it was indeed a protein. So I set up experiments that proved that, in fact, interferons were proteins. Pesca devised a new technology called reverse phase high-performance liquid chromatography for protein purification that resulted in his being able to purify interferon in significant amounts. This method has since become a standard for protein purification and analysis used by laboratories around the world. And we use that to isolate uh, the interferons. And remarkably, we, we were able to carry it out and, and get purified interferons. Pesca found a family of proteins with different characteristics and then developed a cloning technique to produce a genetically engineered interferon. It was the first genetically engineered biotherapeutic drug presented to the FDA for approval and helped launch the multi-billion dollar biotech industry. It was fantastic. It was so exciting, of course, to see for the first time an interferon that was made by genetic engineering. Today, interferon is used to treat patients with chronic hepatitis, multiple sclerosis, as well as certain cancers. But Pesca still isn't satisfied. We're only seeing very little that can be done. We have to develop new ways to use it so the toxic side effects aren't present, or use it locally to treat cancers and viral diseases that have not been amenable to treatment. Despite his groundbreaking research and more than two dozen U.S. patents, it is Sidney Pesca's resemblance to a certain bespectacled comedian that used to gain him the most notoriety. My wife and I went to see Annie Hall. When we came out of the theater, we were surrounded by people who wanted me to sign autographs. And uh, I first said, I'm not, a, I'm not Woody Allen, and they didn't believe me. So I signed their autographs. <laughs> Today, Pesca continues his work at the Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, and his PBL Biomedical Laboratories is the world's largest producer of interferons for research. It is here that Pesca still strives to develop the next generation of interferons to cure diseases. I've constantly had enormous numbers of ideas, and they just fly into my head at, at all times. In fact, the people around here know it. They have to take 99% of them away and forget about it, or they'll never get anything done. In his scientific endeavors, Sidney Pesca has already done more than even he might have dreamt. But he fully expects his greatest contributions are still to come.